Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Last several times we've been here, you've been listening to me on the crappy audio that I've been getting from throwing my voice from here to the camera. This is the 24 inch K Pro professional heavy duty box level. And now we have a new Ulanzi mic set that we're going to review today. We're going to take a look at this and review it and see how we feel about that. The last several videos, we've also taken a look at different tools that we use around the job site. And we've taken a look at the work that we're doing out there on the job site. In today's video, we're gonna get a little more in depth with the crawl space to basement conversion, which Gold's Concrete has done several of throughout the past over a decade now. Okay, do do do. And this pump hose is going down into the basement. How's it going? Good, so far. So far, so good. <laughs> Got Tim pulling the pump hose this way. Gold's Concrete has done several crawl space to basement conversions over the past over a decade right here in the Denver area. And throughout that time, we've accumulated a lot of information and experience in doing these crawl space to basement conversions. So a lot of people have a question about their home and the feasibility of putting a basement beneath their home. So they want to know, you know, can this be done? What would be entailed in doing it? How much would it cost? How could I find out if this could be done in concrete terms for spending the least amount of money possible? That I believe is what is on most people's mind when they go into this, when they start looking at it in the first place is how, before I put any money at all into this, can it be done? Should I spend any amount of time looking at it at all? Or should I just forget about this whole thing and move on? I was just explaining to this client when I was walking through here, there's actually some stress cracking that goes from this corner and it moves up along this side. And then there was some from this top window where it was cracking back in. So these are things that we're looking at when we're walking the exterior of a building. We did this webinar with an online college community that they put together, uh, a course that they put together for students to acquire credits to get their degree in architecture or engineering. But wait, there's more. From the very beginning, it talks about applications for adding basements to existing buildings. So for example, what would be the purpose of putting a basement beneath your, beneath your home, probably for additional living space, assessing the feasibility of adding a basement to an existing building. You can find out more about how to assess the building structure, how to assess the building site. You can find out more about complying with codes and standards. We take a look at the process of designing a basement for an existing building. We explore the area, we talk about and explore the area around your home and look at the best place for an access point to get into to begin excavation on that crawl space. We talk about the new basement construction. So putting in the underpinning, the new basement walls and the new footers that will go in beneath the old foundation and digging down the new floor, placing a new floor. So the entire construction of the whole structure that goes in beneath the building. And last but not least, we talk about integrating the old bound And last but not least, we talk about integrating the basement with the new, with the existing structure. Integrating the basement with the existing structure. And last, and last but not least, we talk about integrating the basement with the existing structure. In that area, we talk about the underpinning and shoring. How does it go in specifically? What is the rebar format? Do you put gravel down? Do you put vapor barrier in there? We're gonna put all this together in an information packet that's available on our website. So all you have to do is go there. You can purchase the packet. It'll be an ebook that's available to you online. You can read through it. It'll make sense of the whole process. If you've ever had a question about your basement or your crawl space area and turning that into a basement, if that's even a possibility for you, with your budget and your structure and the things, your particular situation, this would be the best place for you to go to find out more information on that. But wait, there's more. All 
All right, let's take a look at this new Ulanzi mic set that we're using right now. I have the other transmitter clipped onto my shirt beneath my sweater. The other transmitter is in here. What I like about this mic set already is that you can use just one transmitter at a time and it's not just gonna go only to the right to the right microphone when you're playing it back. The other mic set that I had, I lost one transmitter. And then when I tried to use one transmitter that I still had, it would only play back in the right microphone. It could not be used as a single transmitter mic set. Hi, we're here on a farm today to do some yeah. really great Sil stuff. Silence. You sound like shit, by the way. <laughs> All right, we just pulled up back at the office and I'd like to do a quick review on this mic set that we've been using. This is the Lavalier mic set. It's by Cinco and we have two transmitters and one receiver that is connected to the camera. These are practically brand new. It still has the plastic on the on the cover here. This is the one I clipped to myself here and I usually give this one to someone else. Yesterday, Gold was wearing the other receiver. The whole idea in buying this double transmitter mic set is so that I could use it with either one, a single transmitter or two transmitters at the same time. This one gives you that option. Also, it has a charging case. It'll show you right here whether it's fully charged or still needs to be charged. On the other side, you can plug it in. It has a USB port and you charge it just like you would your cell phone. But wait, there's more. And when you open it, the devices will automatically display the light up right there and they'll link up with the receiver, which is right now plugged into the camera. All you have to do is pull these things out and start using them. You pull them out, you plug them in and you go. So that's what I like about the Ulanzi mic set. Also, it has this, this case right here is handy to carry it in this way. They won't get lost. My other mic set got lost because the case was not very good. You had to zip it and unzip it. They didn't fit in there right. So I would end up just throwing them in my camera bag loose or shoving them in my pocket. And without a secure place for your things, they will get lost. This costed a little over a hundred bucks. It came out a few years ago, so it's not brand new on the market. And so far it's working great. That's our take on the Ulanzi mic set. Let us know if you know of a better one. And if not, well, Check out this one and let us know your thoughts. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do a full walkthrough. There's a little bit of noise, so you're gonna have to bear with the noise because other trade companies are here now doing their finishing touches or doing, doing their touch-up work. This is the building or this is the area that we originally came in at where we put the conveyor belt in and there was an existing basement room right here where we're looking. We opened that room up and we dug into the area where we're standing right now. JC, what kind of shovel is that you got there? It's a missile shovel. This is being nice and round. Yeah. Now it's inverted, which is not as good, but still works good. What brand is it? Uh, Razorman. Okay. Used to be a lifetime warranty, but not no more. Oh. He sent it back to me and said, don't. Oh, they did away with the lifetime warranty? Yep. That was probably an old coal mine pit or something that came in here. Shot Creek this across there, and all this will be supported back there. And then it'll just be a nice little clean room in here. I think all that brick is staying, I'm not positive. We're taking that out or not to get into that room. Oh, 15. 15, 13, 13 by 15. That's this area right here. You can sort of see into the back, into that area beyond that bracing where we were just in the other room. That's the wall that separates us from that other room. You watch this guy with a shovel, man, he's a beast. We're gonna go ahead and do a review right now on this shovel while we're here. You see, this is actually JC's shovel. We got him in the background digging out this crawl space right now as we speak. But wait, there's more. We'll turn around and get a better look at this area once we get down to the other end of the hall. Let's go ahead and walk down there. You see, this is where the gentleman is doing some work right now. So let's just walk right by here. Now, this area all in here was an existing basement. We lowered the floor in this area three feet. Okay, now coming back in here was a corridor that led up to the upper area, the upper level of the house. This is where the stairwell came down and it sat down right here and the corridor opened up to the rest of the basement. Now looking back, you can see that area that we have opened up. Let's get a focus there. Okay. Now moving this way into this area here and back that way was all crawl space. 
So let's go ahead and take a walk back here and look at what we've done. Now right here, this is where the foundation, where the old foundation ended. So there was a huge concrete wall right here that we had to cut through to continue this way. The questions we'll address in this vlog are, what is a crawl space to basement conversion? Once we cut through that concrete wall, this was all crawl space in here, up to here. So we had to dig all this down to what you see right now. Once we had this dug down to where we could get through, we opened up this room right here. For example, in a 20 foot by 20 foot enclosed area, there may only be enough space for two men in a wheelbarrow to work efficiently. Those two men may be at work removing dirt from that area for three weeks before the project can move on to the next phase. Obstacles such as a tight squeeze between the home and the neighboring property typically don't allow for full access of heavy equipment, and hence we rely heavily on manpower and old fashioned techniques. In variables such as a giant boulder or an old foundation unearthed from beneath the soil are common and can also cause delays. Gold's concrete is typically on a basement dig out for three to four months. That means about two to six guys will be on the project at any given time during a normal workday for about three to four months. Where you see JC working on the floor, we dug this whole area down from a crawl space and we poured new footers new underpinning down beneath the old foundation. Let me just point this out right here so you can see what we're looking at. This is the old foundation, okay? This is the new foundation. This is what went in beneath. So we dug all this area down and opened it up so that we could pour the new footers under here and the new foundation wall. That's what all this is. If we pan around here, you're gonna see where these areas have been sectioned out by A and B sections that we dug down. We put time-lapse cameras up in this room, in that corner there, while this dig out was taking place, and another one in that corner right there. So this was the second opening. Once we got into this room right here, we opened up this egress window so that we could get in and out. We could stick the conveyor belt right out through that window and load the dirt on the conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt would dump the dirt right into the trailer once we had it parked outside. Let's go ahead and step out here. All right, we've got our wide angle lens on here now. That doesn't let in quite as much light, so the picture's not all blown out. This is where we originally came in. This is our access point right here from the back alleyway. So this is the back driveway. This dumpster, of course, was not here when we first started working. So this is where we're able to back our trailers in and out of. All right, behind this trailer is the second opening that we opened up into the crawl space area but we're gonna walk around right now and look at the first place that we went into. And the reason we went into this place first, even though we're having to walk around the shed and down the side of the house, the reason we came in here first is because the basement was already here. In this area, there was already a room and a place that we could cut into, that we could get wide open access so that as soon as we opened this up, two, three or four guys could get down in there and start excavating and moving the dirt out with this conveyor belt here. Looking from out here now, we can see where the old foundation ended. So right down here, that's the bottom of the old foundation. And then we had to shockcrete around that to encase the old brick foundation so that the bricks don't just fall right out from underneath. And then once we had that encased, we could then continue to dig beneath the old foundation so that we could pour a wall, a new foundation wall beneath it, which would travel all the way down to a new footer and that would support the new foundation. Once the dirt is out on the conveyor belt into a wheelbarrow, the guys can then wheel the, wheel the dirt out here where we will have, or where we did have our trailer parked right here. 
So they would ramp it right up into the trailer until we had enough area dug out down inside the crawl space that we could open up our second access point, which was right here, right into the driveway, you see. But wait, there's more. So from this point right here, once we had this area opened, is where we could bring the conveyor belt out to dump straight into the trailer. ¿De qué hicimos esta mañana? Este, aquí bajamos cinco pies del furer hacia abajo, de tierra, para poner varilla. Entonces dejamos cuatro pies de tierra para poder sostener la casa. Le llamamos a la A y la B. Ponemos las A's y dejamos la B. Ponemos una A y dejamos la B. Hoy pusimos cemento en, en estas. So, para mañana o pasado mañana podemos seguir escarabando lo que sí, las siguientes para poner varilla y así poner cemento todo alrededor para poder cerrar. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do one more full walkthrough now that we have the wide angle lens on here and we got the light out, the Makita work light, so that we can see everything here. Just get a full pan around. One thing we'd like to mention about the products that we review is that if you click on the link and go to Amazon to purchase this product, it will not cost you anything extra. However, Gold's Concrete will get a small commission from that purchase. So thank you. Thank you ahead of time for your contribution. All right, that's it for today's video. Drop us a comment and don't forget to support your local small business by subscribing to this channel and we'll see you again next time.